All right, here it is, how to bomb proof your 6.5 liter diesel. But first, a word from my sponsor, the guy that makes all this programming possible. The engine itself is a great design and uh, the fact that it continues to be manufactured and especially used in the marine industry, the, the 6.5 liter diesel engine is extremely popular in the industrial marine industry because it'll cruise, it'll just sit there and run all day long at 2500, 3000 RPM and sip fuel. That's where it was way ahead of its time in the miles per gallon category. There's not much on the market that even compares with it today. Um, but once the GM engineers got done with this engine when they first started putting it into uh, civilian vehicles, they messed it up. They engineered it to fail in a few areas and uh, I'm going to show you how to fix that and I'm going to show you how to really, you know, after that I'll show you how to really improve the engine's performance and efficiency. So here we go. I've actually got all three items lined up that you either want to replace with something better or just plain chuck off the engine. We're going to start with the PMD because that's the biggest problem with the 6.5 liter diesel engine as it was released uh, from the factory. The PMD is the pump module. It electronically helps run the injection pump on the engine. And the black box sits right here on the side. That's probably the biggest problem with these engines out of the factory. I'm going to show you why. Okay, we're back over by the engine. And looking at the top, you can see the air plenum here. Down in the valley of the engine itself is the injection pump. And that's not the problem. That's not a bad place for it. But the black box, remember, is on the side of that injection pump. And I don't think there's a hotter place on the engine unless you put it on the turbo itself. It's a very hot place and it tends to burn those electronic parts out fairly quick, which causes injection pump failure. It was the biggest issue with this 6.5 liter diesel. Now unbelievably so, even though they were aware of it, GM never fixed this problem in 6.5 liter diesels. The only thing they did do was try to make tougher PMDs, but nothing's going to withstand, nothing electronics really going to withstand that kind of heat in there. So it caused a lot of bad blood between GM and 6.5 liter diesel uh, engine owners that didn't know any better. Probably thousands and thousands of dollars unnecessarily were spent in replacing healthy injection pumps when the only thing that was wrong with it was the PMD. GM was famous for this. Oh, the injection pump is bad. When there was nothing wrong with that, it was just the PMD. Now, smart enough men on the outside of GM figured this out and the aftermarket eventually solved this issue. And what they did is they made an extension uh, from the injection pump so you could mount the PMD away from the heat in the valley of that engine. Now this is a uh, an air radiator basically just a piece of aluminum that's got fins on it so it's a heat sink and and you could buy something like this in the aftermarket there's several makers of them you could mount the PMD on that anywhere in the engine and extend it out and that way the PMD was cool bang you never had any more problems some guys actually had extensions that they put them in the cab so the temperature was always elect, you know controlled and some guys actually just put it on the front of the bumper so you get airflow to keep it cool once you did that, you never had another PMD problem. Next is the lift pump that GM put on this engine. It's, it's a joke. This thing wouldn't even run my uh, weed whacker. Uh, it was so cheaply made and, and so weak, it's, it's just engineered to fail. Kind of like where they put the PMD. And on top of that, the safety whizzes at GM put an oil pressure switch on that regulates this, this uh, fuel pump and it runs the electronic load. The electronic load that goes to this fuel pump through these wires is run through this oil pressure switch. I, I know this isn't going to give you a good idea of it, but can you see the wiring in there? How flimsy that is? That's never meant, th this was never meant to run the load that's going to this fuel pump. I mean, it's a joke. It's a complete freaking disaster. Now the oil pressure switch is a safety device. If you do flip your truck, it shuts the fuel pump off. And that's not a bad idea. Okay? A lot of guys just bypass that. I'm not going to show you how to do that. You can find that on the internet yourself if you want to do that. I've done that. I really don't care. But 
I'm not going to show you because there's legal ramifications for that. You know, I don't want to be sued because some idiot flips his truck and the, uh, drowns in diesel fuel or something. Because diesel fuel doesn't light on fire very easily. Anyway, the problem with this is, is that this is too small. These wires are big enough to handle the load, but this is ridiculous. Th this is going to fail. So these things would fail. The lift pump itself would fail. It's a joke. And then a lot of times you wouldn't even know that any of these had failed. And so it put extra stress on your injector pump, which is fifteen to two thousand dollars, right? And so you'd burn your injector pump out before you figured out both of these were were hatched, or one of them was hatched. It's just stupid. So I I recommend just getting rid of this, at least getting rid of the the pump itself, and go to a better pump. And for that, what's great about this engine again is the marine industry loves six point five liter diesels. So they ha there's a lot of options for. Uh, marine grade lift pumps and uh, fuel pumps out there and that's what I did. Okay we're underneath the pump right now this is the transfer case on the 4x4 to give you an idea where we are I have a Walbro pump mounted in the exact same place that the stock one was was uh, mounted in and the Walbro is a marine unit it's probably the only pump I'll ever have to worry about on this truck I'll never have to replace it and it provides plenty of pressure for the injector pump. Whereas the stock one barely, barely gave enough. I think you should at least have, you know, like five to seven PSI uh, to feed that injector properly. And the uh, stock one barely with three and four. So even from the factory, it wasn't enough to really feed that injector pump without putting stress on it. This will keep it nice and healthy. The aftermarket also took care of uh, the wiring problem for that oil pressure switch. Instead of running the power, the load of the electrical through the pressure switch, uh, which is way too weak to even handle the stock pump, uh, the aftermarket makes a small relay that you can buy and you can power the fuel pump directly from the battery. This one I bought from Leroy Diesel, but Kennedy Diesel makes them too, and it's real handy. This one actually comes with a manual button. Even when, uh, even when the truck's off, I can push the button to start the pump just to bleed my lines if I'm changing a fuel filter. Just, it's, it's such a handy deal to have. And again, this is pretty cheap aftermarket stuff and makes your truck bulletproof in the end. Okay, last but not least is the vacuum pump. And what you want to do with this beautiful vacuum pump is take it off as soon as possible and just throw it away. It sucks. Alright, looking at the front of the engine, this is where the engineers at GM planned to put the vacuum pump. They put it there on purpose, right here. So you're lucky if you get 10 to 15,000 miles out of that really poorly made vacuum pump. And then you got to take like 10 things off just to get to it. It's insane. It's hard for me to believe that supposedly educated engineers thought this was a good idea. I mean, it's just really dumb. And on top of that, the only purpose for that vacuum pump, the only thing that it does, is run the wastegate arm on the turbo. Now, you can easily run a manual one on there, which is what most people do. But they thought it was necessary to put a whole vacuum pump, a crappy vacuum pump, in a crappy place just to run the crappy wastegate arm. Is this nuts? I mean, I can't believe they didn't do this on purpose just to be jackasses. So take it off, throw it away, buy a belt for a 93 6.5 liter diesel, and that will take up the slack. And these are the three things, those three things. If you do that, you'll make your 6.5 liter diesel bomb proof. You'll fix what the engineers at GM uh, did to this engine because it's not the engine design itself, it's the infrastructure, it's the uh, support engineering that goes in to help run the engine. They're the ones that ruin this engine from the factory, so you have to kind of fix it. So whether you're setting an engine up, if you buy a new one, this is how you want to set it up with, with these three items for sure. Or if you're buying a used one, you want to look for these three items and make it right again. And you'll have a bomb-proof engine. Now I'm going to show you some of the things that I did that modified it that really bring out the horsepower and the efficiency of this motor. The two best things you can do for any diesel is to open it up. Open up the intake and open up the exhaust. So get rid of the uh, restrictive uh, intake air box on it. Get a, get a big filter like this on it 
and let the engine breathe. Next thing you want to do is open up the exhaust. If you're going to open up the intake, it's not going to do any good unless you open up the exhaust. Now, the best one that I have found for the 6.5 liter diesel is the 4 inch exhaust by Diamondback. It's really nice, really nicely made. I've put on several of them since I've owned this vehicle and they go on really nice. They last a long time too and they sound great. So a nice big 4 inch exhaust. Diesels love to be kept cool. As they get hot, they lose power. Keep them cool, keep them happy. The fan that GM put on this engine is a joke. I wish I had it. I got it around here somewhere. I, I take it out every once in a while to laugh at it. Get rid of that thing and put on a uh, bigger fan. This one is off a of Duramax and works great. Moves a lot of air. So make that cooling upgrade for sure on your vehicle. GM also put these engines out with like 200 degrees, sometimes 195 degree thermostats, and that's ridiculous. Tune them down to 190 degree thermostats and the engine will be a lot happier. Now everything I've showed you so far, especially the first three things, they're very simple and cheap to do. I mean, you can stop with just the first three things just to make the rig right and you're going to have a very solid running truck. Now, the modifications that I've showed you after that are, are going to increase your miles per gallon and power for the truck and just overall lifespan. Uh, it's going to keep your, your, uh, your motor healthier. It's going to be happier, running cooler, and breathing better. But if you want to take it to the next level and you don't mind spending a little more money, you can start by tuning the truck. You can get different tunes for this truck. And that's what I like about an electronically controlled vehicle like this. And that's why, another little hint here for you, that's why I really like the 94 and 95 years of the 6.5 liter diesel because those were the OBD1 uh, control units. And they came with removable chips from the computer itself. Now this is the computer that actually sits in my truck. This is an extra one. I've got all kinds of extra parts for this thing. And I have three different PROMs with different um, um, downloads uh, depending on what I'm doing. So I've got one for miles per gallon, I got one for towing, and I got one just for overall power if I just want to act like a jackass redneck and blow smoke all over the place. So the best place that I have found uh, for tuning chips is Heath Diesel. I mean, this guy lives and breathes 6.5 liter diesels, but he's not the only guy out there. Remember, the 6.5 liter diesel is still thriving in the aftermarket world. And lastly, if you want to go to the very top of the mountain with 6.5 liter diesel engines, you can buy the GM tech scan software from Ings Motors in Sweden. This guy produced an identical program to what GM uses for these motors. So you can cut the dealership, you can cut the stealer right out of the picture with this software. This thing will set timing. You can watch every function that the motor has, every sensor. You can even watch individual uh, performance of cylinders themselves and the injectors. Just an incredible piece of software. It was the last piece missing just to get rid of the dealer. So you can set the timing to whatever you want, depending on if you're in the mountains or in the lowlands. It doesn't matter. It's just... Uh, I guess that last little puzzle piece where you have total control over the engine itself. Great piece of software. The best news of all is that this only costs $120 for the program. You can download it to your laptop from Sweden and go to work on your truck right away. And seeing that the dealer charges about $150 just to set the timing once, it's well worth the investment. If you're so that's it. I'm going to end it here. but. Uh... That's how to make your 6.5 liter diesel bomb proof. Again, if you just do the first three things, you're going to be great. But uh, the aftermarket leaves you a lot of other avenues to go down.